Hello and welcome to Fight News Now Extra. I'm your host, John Pollock. Lots to discuss today on the show with John Ramdean and Robin Black as the UFC has to move around fights after a main event falls apart for February. An interesting signing by the UFC, a Hall of Famer returns to fight, and title implications for a major fight coming up this month. Glover Teixeira has been forced to withdraw from his February 22nd fight with Rashad Evans, which was scheduled to headline a fight night card in Brazil. The UFC has now moved the heavyweight bout between Frank Mir and Antonio Silva up a week to headline the Brazil card after the two were scheduled to fight at UFC 184 the following weekend. UFC President Dana White appeared on UFC Tonight and stated that it was likely if Anderson Silva were to defeat Nick Diaz on January the 31st, the former middleweight champion would get to fight the winner of the Chris Weidman Vitor Belfort fight for the championship later this year. Silva returns to action at UFC 183 at the end of the month, following 13 months away after breaking his leg at UFC 168 in December of 2013 in his second fight with Chris Weidman. The UFC has signed Irish lightweight Joseph Duffy, who was allowed out of his Cage Warriors deal in order to sign a multi-fight deal with the promotion. Duffy is a 12-1 fighter, having fought professionally since March of 2008 and holds the distinction of being the last fighter to defeat Conor McGregor back in November of 2010, with the two fighting at 155 pounds. UFC Hall of Famer Ken Shamrock has announced that he will be fighting once again, but this time in a different arena. Shamrock has signed to fight James Quinn in a bare-knuckle boxing fight on April the 20th in the UK. It has been over four years since Shamrock last fought in MMA, having fought three times in 2010 and not taking any fights since that time. And I'm here with John Ramdean and Robin Black. We are not going to chat about cocaine today. We're going to move on to another topic. Thank God. Yeah. That being testosterone levels. <laughs> because to me, this is becoming the more, to me, interesting story here is the fact that we have gotten results of John Jones' drug test where his testosterone levels very low to the part uh, alarmingly low, low for some people who feel that they have his samples and these should be tested uh, using that CIR test, Robin, that I know you have uh, discussed in the past. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a weird one, right? Like. If your testosterone is low, that, that occurs in lots of human beings. But in the past, when Chel Sonnen had a low testosterone and Vitor had a low testosterone, they were like, man, we can't fight. You know, I'm so lethargic. You know, my wife's so displeased with my sexual, you know, uh, performance. Like everything, the world is ending. This guy fought with a low testosterone and beat the second best light heavyweight in the world. But when your testosterone is that low and you're a 27-year-old man, often or occasionally or sometimes, that's a result of other shenanigans. What do you mean? Like maybe somehow it was really too high and then came down low. How? I don't know. Does Coke do that? One of his tests know. was as low as 0.19 to 1. The typical ratio is 1 to 1. Yeah. And I mean, they, they have a high cutoff point, but also there are some who believe there should be a low cutoff point where, there, where red flags are, are raised and people are concerned about this. And, you know, it, I think at the very least you have these samples, you at least conduct this test and find out if, if experts out there are believing that is the method you take, that's who I would be listening to. Yeah, I mean, you know, the whole thing, on Saturday night we saw one of the great performances ever in light heavyweight fighting, and by Tuesday morning we're talking about everything but, and that's just This is like every ugly aspect of yeah. MMA. It's yeah. like you talked about a fight that everyone was so anticipating, it turned out to be, I thought, a great fight, yeah. and the aftermath, it's, there's no focus on the fight. It is yeah. everything surrounding the fight and leading up to it, who knew what, who did what, and when. And the I, problem is we have to blame John Jones for this because, you know, this was or is the biggest fight of his career and one of the biggest fights in recent memory of the UFC. And you have to take this fight seriously. You have to focus on the training camp. You have to make sure you're doing the things that you need to be doing and not doing the things you shouldn't be doing. And it doesn't seem that John Jones was uh, and let, taking this fight Let's that also seriously. not leave the commission out of this yeah, because they're man, responsible they fumbled too. a bunch yeah. of stuff here. The fact that they stated, well, it was an, an oversight that we happened to test for recreational drugs. We weren't even supposed to be mm -hmm. testing for that. I mean, hey, I'm glad they they found yeah. it if it helps this guy yeah. and gets him to rehab yeah. Yeah. but a big error there they have a meeting on Monday how they don't test these samples is beyond me and I think that th there's culpability across the board here yeah you know whatever happens from it you just you hope this guy goes and if it's been a distraction or something harmful to his health or his life 
that he, he looks back later and goes, I'm so glad that happened, and I'm so glad that people found out, and I'm so glad I was embarrassed, I'm so glad I went to rehab, because my life's way better. That's what you hope. And you hope whatever goes on with this stuff, that when the corner is turned, we all go back and go, let's just have quality fights with good, you know, uh, good commissions and do everything right, because this kind of stuff dis distracts so much from a great sport. It brings your testosterone down, doesn't it, Robin? <laughs> A uh, quality fight is Anderson Silva and Nick Diaz on January the 31st, uh, but an interesting decision, and this one to me spoke a lot to what the UFC is about this year, and that is making the most money possible on pay-per-view, and that Anderson Silva would likely be in line for a middleweight title fight, passing by Rockhold, Weird. passing by Jacare or Weird. Yoel Romero, but Anderson Silva, you can make the argument, it, that rematch with Weidman is the biggest fight to make at middleweight. I think that they're just going for what is going to draw the biggest, regardless yeah. of his path there. I don't feel he deserves a title fight. Yeah, I mean, he's already lost twice to, to the champion, Chris Weidman. I can understand if it was one and one and you're looking for the rubber match. That makes sense. But I don't think the fans would even get behind this fight. I understand. It's all he's about commerce. He is a big star. He is a big star. star. But the fact is you can give Anderson Silva big fights where you can make money. I think when you look at the middleweight title picture right now, there are so many guys that are deserving of a chance at that 185 pound title that would be compelling for the fans it would be competitive fights maybe competitive fights and i think you just give anderson silva super fights like you're giving him right now with nick diaz if a 40 year old guy who broke his leg in half uh, all of a sudden you know and lost twice to a guy and dealt with all that pressure if all of a sudden that guy's like i want to fight uh, chris weidman I, I don't think that's likely to happen i like the pure sport the right guys should fight the right guy the top guys but at the same time i understand the history of being a promoter involves yelling a lot of, hey, this guy, if he wins this, yeah. and adding stuff to it. That's part of fighting. He is Robin Black, John Ramdean. I'm John Pollock. More of Fight News Now Extra is coming your way.